All right, accounting students, it's Friday. I'm starting to think that Fridays are not the right day to have accounting, <laughs> but we will make it through this. Okay, so today's lecture was recorded with no sound. So I will attempt to move through the same information as best I can remember that we covered it, um, talking about chapter four and um, the problems in chapter four, giving you a preview of the test, giving you study hints for the test, and then um, discussing how we're going to move ahead with chapter five. So bear with me. And um, the only good news is this video will be much shorter than actual class time because class time has so much dead time in between um, things. So we'll, we'll try it this way. All right, so going over the chapter four problems, now they are revealed to you, so you can look at them just like I can. So they're in assignments, and they are listed underneath the problems where you will actually turn in your problems. Let me just pull those up here. All right, so looking at the first problem, um, a question that I remember from class today was, why is the post-reference area empty? And the answer to that is problem 4.1 was only asking you to record the transactions. You didn't go forward with um, posting them into the ledgers. So um, the post-reference spot is there for you when you move this information, for example, rent expense, $1,900, to the rent expense ledger. When you finish posting over there, you come back to the general journal and you write down the rent expense um, account number in the post reference box. It's sort of like checking it off that you got that line posted. So then line by line, you take each line to the ledger. When you finish on the ledger, you come back and you write the, uh, write the account number. You'll see down the road, we actually will use a check mark on some of the things that we do. It's just a double check that you've got it in the ledger. Okay, so, um, I know you guys can look at the solutions on your own to see if you've got your um, information listed appropriately. And if you have a specific question about a transaction, please ask me through Remind or by email or, um, or call me. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm happy to, to answer why on some of these um, transactions if they don't seem right to you. Okay, so um, that's the end of almost the end of, I, of problem 4.1. And then looking at problem 4.2, a tip here is this problem is very, very similar to your test. Okay, so um, doing the transactions and the posting and then getting to the point of the trial balance is what exactly you will be doing on the chapter four test. All right, so remember any questions on these particular transactions on page one and your page numbers would be different than mine because they're just breaking my answer key wherever it breaks and they're just starting with page two that's how it should be notice they do have the post reference in them because this problem is completed the information has already been taken line by line to the ledgers coming back to the post reference when you finish in the ledger um, I think we did talk about item uh, on October 12th. That was um, receiving money for uh, your service of, of $6,000 of work, receiving $41 in cash, and the rest um, to be paid on credit. So the $1,900, I believe you had to calculate that one. Or one of them, I think maybe they gave you the two numbers and you had to add together to make fees income. I didn't quite... Um, I don't have my book open right in front of me right now, right this second. Compound entries, like on the 18th, anytime you have two numbers on one side and one, two, three numbers on the other side, anytime there's more than one number on either side, it's a compound entry. One of the examples we talked about today in class was um, salaries. Let me see if we can run to the end of this one. Yes, so the salary expense on the 30th, that is sometimes the last expense you have um, for your transactions. Let's say, for example, that um, 
in the cash you, um, or in the salaries expense you had for employees. So you had um, a expense line for each employee. So in the end, they would add up to, let's just make an example, $8,000. And then you would have um, a, a debit for an expense per employee. Um, that would be another example of a compound entry. All right, so that, I believe, was the end of the transactions. Finishing the transactions, then you go line by line and post the information into the ledgers. Okay, here is where I answered quite a few questions today, and I think I can help enlighten you here just a little bit. I'm going to use my snip tool so I can draw. You'll see what I'm doing here in just a second. Um, so each one of these lines came from a line in the general journal. On page one, for example, here, this one was page two, three, whatever. Okay, so the information from the journal goes directly into the debit or the credit line, depending on if you paid cash or you got cash. What we're doing over here, and may, and go ahead and make notes in your um, on your pages. That will help you learn. What we're doing over here in the balance is this is a running balance. And now this is going to be a kindergartner writing this, but think of this as a running balance, kind of like your checkbook register, for any of you guys who still keep a checkbook register, <laughs> where you're trying to keep a running balance of how much money you have. Your balance, let's see, I want a different color here. Maybe I can't get a different color of pen. Your, um, your balance section, I'd like you to think of as a T account. <laughs> Nice if I could draw straight. I just can't draw straight. Um, think of it as a T account. Also, um, here's a nice reminder, this is an asset. So we know an asset has a normal balance on the debit side. So go ahead and make notes on your ledgers. That's totally fine with me. I think it will help you as you're learning. All right, so when you finish um, the posting for problem 4.2, you're gonna wanna double check with the solutions that you have the right total at the bottom of every line. Okay, or at the bottom of every ledger. All right, moving on to the accounts receivable. Same idea with the wait, what did I do? Same idea if you want to think about it in the T account mode. So now um, accounts receivable is also an asset. Supplies is also an asset. Your balance is sort of like your T account or that little cheat sheet that you have on a card that I mailed to you guys if you um, are off campus. And your normal balance on an asset is the debit side. Make notes, that's fine, please. Okay, let's get to um, a liability and the capital. Oh, perfect, we'll do these two. Okay, so here we have a liability, if you want to note that, and then on our T account, on our balance for our T account, we um, have a normal balance on the credit side because it's a liability. And same with the capital, this is a capital account, or owner's equity if you want to put it that way, that's fine. And our normal balance is on the credit side. Okay, now, um, when, your norm, when your normal balance is on that side, that's um, the number you use when you're subtracting a decrease. Uh, I maybe didn't say that quite perfectly, but let's just look at this accounts payable, for example. And our first transaction of, of October was a $15,000 credit. That means we are... Um, we are going to be paying someone else $15,000 for maybe equipment we bought or, or whatever. Okay, so on our first transaction that goes into this ledger, we just transfer the total over to the right-hand column of the credit balance. Okay, on our second transaction, if it's also a credit, we add it to the 15000 and that's why we have 16250 
but now the 7,050 is on the decrease side for a liability on the debit side, so we subtract 750 from 16,250 to, to end up with our 8,750. So again, kind of like your checkbook register where you either have um, checks that you've written to subtract from your balance or checks that you have deposited to increase your balance. Think of it kind of like that, even though I always preach to you, you're not, you're not um, the consumer here, you're the business but it's the same idea as far as keeping track of a ledger on each account. All right, moving forward. Um, I think everything should be pretty good there. Expenses are always pretty simple. All right, and then we did walk through the um, information for problem 4.3. And on that one, uh, there are four transactions shown on your in your book and there's an error in them and, and you need to figure out how the error um, how the error was made. What I like to tell students when they're learning this, learning and using this problem is to read the notation that was made in the general journal. Don't look at the entry first, look at the notation first. Cover up the entry and think to yourself, okay, um, let me pull out my book because I'll mess this up. looking at problem four, three, on page 115. So when I look at that first entry, I'm going to cover up the debit and the credit line, and I'm just going to look at the notation. It says performed services on credit. So I think in my head, if I perform services on credit, that means I'm going to get money, because that's a fees income, that's my revenue. So um, the credit's going to go to fees income, and um, the customer didn't pay me cash, they're going to pay me later, so that would be accounts receivable. Okay, then reveal what it is, and you can see, oh gosh, accidentally I put it in accounts payable. I just was thinking backwards right then. So you know that that was the error as accounts payable, a payable was putting put in the journal and it should have been accounts receivable. Looking at the second one, again, cover up the entry and just look at the notation. Paid for January telephone service with a check. All right, so a telephone service, that would be telephone expense. That's always a debit. Expenses are always a debit, always a debit, always a debit. Okay, so telephone expense would be the debit and cash would be the credit. Okay, what, it, what happened? Opposite. Just put it in upside down. Okay, so that one just needs to be switched around. And then covering up the third transaction with my thumb and looking at the notation, purchased a file cabinet and office supplies with a check. Okay, so we are going to add an asset. We're going to add two different assets. Um, the first one, the um, office equipment would be the filing cabinet and office supplies would be um, the second account listed. And um, so there's nothing wrong with the debit on this transaction. There is something wrong with the addition, um, so the, it, the two debits were not added correctly. And I was totally looking at problem 4.3b instead of 4.3a. Good grief. Um, gosh, I wonder how close they are. Okay, good. They're similar. The numbers, the numbers are different, but the um, entries are the same. So, adding the two together there on that last one would be seventy-two hundred and eight thousand. Should be eight thousand instead of eighty-four hundred. Wow. See, now it doesn't even take technology to get me goofed up. All right, let's look at problem four. Problem four was just a short um, problem, just with three transactions, but going through the posting as well. So this one does though have multiples, it's compound, compound entries on each one of them. If you have questions that you'd like to ask on any of those, again, use the Remind app, send me a, an email. I have email on my phone. Even when I'm gone this weekend, I'm sure I can answer your questions if you're working on this. 
Okay, now, um, the next thing I'd like to show you guys, oh, let me finish. Well, you can, you can look at these solutions on your own. I don't think there's anything special here to talk about. All right. Next, then, is to talk about the Chapter 4 test, give you some clues on the test. All right, so um, the test is now available in test and quizzes. Two parts, like always. The first part is objective test, multiple choice, and true-false. The second part is um, a problem. Now, you'll notice here that there's two files. There's an Excel file, and there's um, a, a Word document. The Word document is your instructions, kind of like what you saw in the book, and it's very, very similar to problem 4.2. All right, so you'll want to probably print the Word document so you can have that to um, cross off your transactions and follow, follow through the steps. The Excel sheet, um, the notation here talks about using the Excel file. You can either print it out to handwrite or you can actually type in it. I wanna show you though that it doesn't have any abilities to add things up for you. So when you open up the Excel file, it's going to look like so. Take a look at the bottom. There are different tabs, and that's just to keep it from being a really, really, really long journal. I want it broken up into pieces so it's more manageable on a screen for me to grade. So you have three pages that you can use for your journal entries. And um, you, do, um, you do want to, if you want to type into Excel, that's fine, and then you can just save it here. But again, I want to warn you that you can't, add. You can't use some, you can't use any adding. You still have to add by hand because you can see that I've got a separate cell for every one of the numbers. Okay, and I did notice that I had to stretch out. Oh, well, maybe I'll leave, I'll leave that alone for a second. Let me put in the first entry. Oh, I need to open the test. Directions. Okay, so the first entry or the first transaction is Darren McDonald invested $40,000 cash to start the business. So if you were going to type it into Excel, I can't remember the date now, but you would put the month and the date and you would put Darren, wow, just saw, I forgot, Darren McDonald 40000 <clears throat> Darren McDonald Capital. There's nothing in the post reference because that's when that's later. And you're adding to the capital account. So you're gonna have forty thousand. You don't have to put any cents in the cents column, but notice how my forty thousand didn't fit. Column M needs to be just a little bit wider. So you just get up between M and M, and you can just stretch it a little further to the right to make it a little wider. Sorry about that, but still, if you like using the computer more than handwriting, this is the way you're gonna wanna do it. So for the second entry, um, cash, and we're going to debit cash, 40,000. So you can see that I can't use Excel to do the math for me. I can't use it to sum because each one of the digits are in a different column. That won't be the case when we move forward, but for this particular problem, I wanted it to be more like your papers that you've been working with, and I have most students wanting to just print this out and handwrite it. However you decide it is fine, and if you want to modify Excel to be better, that's fine too. Um, I'm, I'm pretty lenient with that. Okay, and then your notation would go here. All right, so that's how we, you would use the journal. Oh, you would also put page number one here, and then when you fill this one up, you would want to move to page two, type page two here, and so forth. Now, when you finish doing the transactions, you'll start putting them into, into the ledgers. Here, the ledgers are already built for you with the name and the account number, so you don't have to worry about making sure you're in the right ledger. They're all set for you. Notice, though, at the bottom on the tabs, there are several pages of ledgers. And then the very last thing you'll do is move the totals of your ledgers here into the trial balance. So you'll fix the name of the business, put it here, 
it is a trial balance, you'll type the correct date, then you'll list your accounts in order by account number, so that's easy, the 100s through the 500s listed with their balances on the correct side, and then you'll add them up with a calculator and put the totals down here at the bottom. All right, now, the last thing we talked about in class today, oh, well, this, this test is due on Wednesday the 8th at midnight. Um, originally, I was thinking Tuesday, but um, I think Wednesday's going to be perfect. It'll give you a few, uh, few more hours to ask me questions um, and get through chapter four problems if you had any problems with them and then and then get the test done. So have that done by Wednesday. And then on Friday, let me come back here. On Friday, we will um, start working together on the exercises in chapter five. So you don't have to have exercises done on Friday. I want you to be all prepped and ready to um, start the exercises in Chapter 5 together. Chapter 5 is um, introducing new things to us. We're going to learn how to do adjustments, and we're going to learn how to put together a worksheet that incorp incorporates the trial balance, the adjustments, the adjusted trial balance, the income statement, and the balance sheet. And it's kind of like a big working paper that you use for that one last check of all of your data for the month before you do your official financial statements. So I'd like to work with you together on that. Again, I will plan to do a recording of our work together on Friday, and I will plan in my afternoon to be available to re-record it <laughs> if, if necessary. So I'll just, if I plan a backup plan, maybe I won't need it. Okay, so I will post a new announcement with the um, information about Chapter 5. I'd like you to have watched the online video before Friday's class because you've got to have your head wrapped around what we're doing before we jump into the exercises. Thanks for putting up with my technical nightmare that happens every single Friday <laughs> in one way or another. All right, see ya.